So thank you so much. Uh, and I'm so glad for having the opportunity to talk about our journey for electrifying the public transport in our area. And in fact, the shift to e-buses is needed for reaching the climate goals. And without the electrification, we have no possibilities to reach those goals. And we are already using fossil free energy in our bus traffic. And to take further steps, we need the shift from renewable energy to electric. And of course, only solar, hydrogen and wind power. My name is uh, Hanna Björk. I'm head of sustainability at Vestrafik. Uh, I have worked with, with this kind of issues for, for many years now. And uh, I will stop, start um, uh, introducing our region, Västra Götaland. That is located in the western part of Sweden. We have 1.7 uh, million inhabitants, which is almost 17% of the Sweden's population. The area consists of 49 different municipalities. The largest city is Gothenburg with 580,000 inhabitants and Gothenburg is also the second largest city in Sweden. Uh, Vestrafik is a public transport authority and we are owned by the region of Västra Götaland. We are responsible for all public transport in our region. It means buses, trams, trains, ferries, and we tender all traffic services. Uh, normally, a contract is 10 years long, and the buses are owned by the operators. And we specify uh, the buses following a Nordic standard, and the buses are allowed to be between 10 or 13 years old, depending on the type of traffic. Our goal is to reduce the CO2 emission by 90% before 2035. As you can see, the, the, the reduction of CO2 comes from the shift from fossil energy to renewable energy, but that isn't enough. Basically, all our bus, bus traffic runs on renewable energy. And as I said, to, re to reach the climate goals, electrification in a larger scale is needed. During the pandemic, we also lost uh, a lot of passengers, but we are still doing all planned actions to the shift to e-buses and steps are also taken to, uh, to the e-shift uh, in ferry traffic. As you all know, uh, electrification is preferable in city traffic uh, since they are silent and emission free and that benefits uh, the development of the city environment. And we will have all city traffic uh, electrified at latest 2030. But uh, most of the traffic will be electrified 2025 due to the, uh, when uh, the different traffic is procured. It has been and is uh, important to learn uh, for us to learn together and to test new technology in a new mutual learning process with both industry and science. Uh, with this knowledge, we have been able to take further steps and testing has also given us the courage to, to tender e-bus traffic. Uh, it is important to have a joint vision. Um, we started with pilots uh, with both plug-in hybrids and full electric buses, continued um, in introduction e-buses in existing contracts. Uh, together with our contracted partners, and now we are procuring e-buses. Uh, following slides will uh, be about lessons learned, and at first um, something on the overall level. When we tender, we need to have clear requirements in the contracts. We also need to give the operators free hands to develop the traffic services in local contacts. Um, this is not a uh, a new, uh, this is a whole new system. It's not just a change of buses. <clears throat> and since, since the beginning towards electrification, also the operators have, uh, have learned a lot and their knowledge have increased. And this is very clear when we get tenders today. We can see that charging at the depots are preferable. 
almost uh, every apparatus um, uh, prefer them. Uh, and we think it's because of more flexibility in the daily operation with the vehicles. And it's also important for us to invite the operators early in the process to have a close dialogue uh, when we prepare pairing the tenders so they understand what we are aiming for. Now challenges and obstacles because there are some. Uh, is there enough of power in the local and the city level uh, in the grid? Uh, there is not yet any problems with energy support uh, but in the future when everything goes electric we need to use and share the capacity in the grid much better when, than today. And in the preparation uh, before the tendering process, uh, Vestafik also have a dialogue with the municipality to find suitable places for the charging stations at hubs and also get power to them. And we have dialogue with the local energy companies so, so we can secure uh, enough power supply to the depots. And this is because there is a limited time when we establish the new contracts and the new traffic service. Uh, it's also important for us to have the depots close to the network. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, this can create uh, conflicts with the land use uh, for the municipalities and the city development. Uh, <clears throat> it is also free for the operators to choose whether they prefer end stop charging or charging at night at the depots. But if the operators would choose to have buses with end stop charging, we secure building permits. Uh, the, the operators are responsible for building the charging station and take care of the maintains during the contract period. But when the contract ended, uh, the Vestrafik have disposal for the charging infrastructure uh, and that is uh, in order to have competent uh, neutrality between interested parties in the next tender. It's also very important not to unestimate the, uh, the challenges because they take times and there are many stakeholders involved. Uh, we need to have more time between a normal uh, than the normal between uh, awarding a contract and start of the traffic. In the perfect world, we would like to have 18 months and we also very much try to, to, to get these 18 months because they are needed. The tender shows a great desire for the uh, transport companies to, to choose depot charge buses. Uh, <clears throat> it's also difficult to analyze today. Um, but we see no increased traffic costs for the electrification. Uh, but of course, uh, at the same time, it's, it's, it's streamlining the, uh, the traffic for when we change for new traffic. So details are hard to know, but we can see no extra cost for electrifying the city traffic today. It's also a new way of optimizing the vehicles, as I said, not only uh, focus on peak traffic, the drivers, uh, the drivers uh, driving style uh, and the uh, nature of the routes have large impacts on the uh, um, uh, electric, um, electrification or on the electric cons uh, consum consumption. And also the consumption is much higher in the summer when the buses uh, uses the air condition. Uh, and also minus degrees uh, affects the electric uh, consumption uh, for the buses. Training of the drivers is also important. The driving style affects the range of the electric bus. Um, and sometimes that we have seen, it has been challenges for the drivers to place the bus correctly under the pantograph. And sometimes several attempts were required and that, uh, that um, gives um, back noises. Uh, and that is disturbing from the residents uh, along uh, or living near the pantograph, of course, or near the uh, charging stations. Uh, it's very uh, simple. You can just mark the place to, st uh, to stop. Um, so the drivers get a little bit help from that. 
Um, it's also needed to uh, charge uh, even if it delays next trip. We can see that an e-bus has faster uh, acceleration and there have been some software adjustments and of course learning how to drive and handle the vehicle. And it is very positive to, to drive an electric bus. It's more comfortable. The work environment is much better and the driver feels less tired after the working day. And we have also had 100% customer satisfaction by people traveling with the e-buses. They highly appreciate the comfort, the silence, and also the fact that the buses are, uh, are electric. As I said, to shift to e-buses is also making the shift for all traffic modes, of course, is, is not only important, it is needed to reach the climate goals. To, uh, our goal is, as I said, to reduce the CO2 emission by 90% before 2030. This figure shows the possi possibilities that we see now. Uh, we can, we think we can uh, reduce the CO2 emission even more. Uh, our goal is set by 90% per passenger kilometers. Uh, and this um, picture shows the total amount of CO2 emission. We have already, already started the shift to e-buses in city traffic. We have nowadays uh, 320 e-buses in our traffic or in the summer, uh, we will get new ones, so we will come up to three, uh, 320 almost. Uh, <clears throat> and we can see that the shift uh, on the, uh, is possible also on the outskirts traffic and the rural traffic, because nowadays there are vehicles on, on the market suitable for our traffic. And all bus traffic will be electrified or can be, we think it can be electrified 2035. It is possible. Uh, and it's also possible to uh, go for electrification in a larger scale in the ferry traffic and also to have uh, zero emission trains because we have one uh, route with diesel trains in our traffic today. And to conclude, it is important not to lose sight of our vision long term goals. Electrification is needed, uh, but also to travel together. All major chains are the same as before the pandemic. We are still having this climate change and we are still having the urbanization. And our investment in electric buses and electric ferries, trams and trains, it continues. But from there we must and we will increase the ridership with the public transport as well as, as, as walking and biking, of course. And this is necessary to get an attractive and sustainable city and region. So electrification is, is needed and it is important for us to reach the climate goals. Thank you so much for listening.